Uh, yes, uh, we are Open Remote, and Open Remote is an open source IoT platform, uh, truly open source, so 100% open source. Uh, code is published, obviously. Um, and IoT in this case means we're focusing on a broad range of applications on the more professional IoT side, so professional applications in IoT. Um, as we are an open source company, we have a distributed team so we uh, represent it in uh, in the netherlands but also in uh, in germany in belgium in the us switzerland and the uk that's the the, mo the most important countries for us in terms of the, of the team so we have a distributed team um now maybe starting with the, the 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 last question so the types of solutions and applications it's a we have a generic IoT platform, but we do see and acknowledge that there's specific application domains where it, it gets more traction and it gets to, uh, more used. And there is a reason for that, and I'll come to that, uh, that later. Uh, and if you talk, talk about these typical domains, it's, it's around, let's say, in a broader context, smart cities, which is a, quite a broad terminology because that still doesn't answer the question on which application, but it's basically used by governments and it, and it can be around energy, it can be around mobility, it can be around crowd management. One of the applications is the application for by the Dutch military police on the uh, Amsterdam Schiphol airports, while another city uses it for energy management, which is obviously completely different kind of applications, but the, 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 the overarching part is that it's government related um going back to the other one what what are the benefits of a platform that's not you shouldn't ask me obviously you should ask users that's not but what we get uh, as feedback why people recognize using us there's a yeah maybe three reasons the first one is that we're uh, truly open source and open source is something else than open uh, as you probably know uh, so we truly open source and also uh, we don't have features in our source code hidden behind the subscription model. So all functionality is available open source, um, which makes it relatively attractive for medium larger companies to use as a baseline to develop their own IoT product. So that's one, 100% uh, open source. The second one is that the the, the, the front end elements, the user interface, what we call the manager UI, is very intuitive. So you don't have to be uh, uh, um, an advanced programmer to understand the, the, the functionality of the system. And it, it's quite intuitively to use if you're not a non programmer. And the third part has less to do, so the benefits has less to do with the, the platform itself, but with the support. So what we see is that there's a we think we're quite good at it. At least we get positive feedback about um, being able to support customers with the full integration and whether that's with helping to develop their solution to a specific project problem or, or product, uh, uh, up to giving application support with development or organizing hosting for them or uh, anything which is relevant to, deli to deliver a full solution for uh, an end customer or a user of our system, so ha ha a system with all kinds of services. So that's the third benefit, which uh, again is less about the platform, but more about the supporting organization. Um, yeah, that, that's quite broad, and I also already briefly mentioned it. So. Um, we typically have two kind of uh, so solutions which people use. No, three. So one of them is more related to crowd management. So being able to get overviews of yeah, moving uh, groups of, of people or traffic or whatever uh, objects which move, which transport people. So the specific example would be what I mentioned is border control on Schiphol Airport. So we give insights to the military police on how people are moving around the airport and also pre predict the movements around the airport and the main reason for that is to for them to 
ahead of time predict the required staff or required number of lanes on the airport. So th th that's a specific example around the broader application of the I our generic IT platform related to crowd management. Uh, the second one is uh, energy management also mentioned. So if you look at uh, challenges around energy management uh, and uh, uh, meaning uh, you producing in a, in, a, in a smaller environment, you're producing renewable energy by solar or by wind. And on the same time, you're consuming a lot of energy. Think about EV chargers or uh, HVAC heating in, in, in buildings. You can imagine that uh, balancing the uh, production with the consumption has a, both an economic and, uh, let's say, carbon exhaust potential if you can optimize align consumption basically with production to simplify it and that has value for it can be government it can be campus kind of organization so uh, co companies with their own uh, sites uh, or universities for example or as mentioned governments they can benefit there's a financial benefit to to use an energy management system like that and the third domain is broader uh, that's more towards uh, medium-sized OEMs so co companies who started with hardware and are installing a lot of har uh, that hardware with a lot of users and that can be extremely broad from installing uh, showers into uh, buildings to um, installing uh, uh, electronic converters for s certain systems uh, around the globe uh, and all of them have a need to uh, gradually move to digital and remote access to all of these devices they uh, they have installed. And for the reason of um, monitoring them in terms of uh, failures, but also uh, adding additional features on top of the just the hardware. So having remote live access to data of these systems would have an additional benefit for either the end user or the installer or for themselves. So that's more generic asset management, asset maintenance, uh, which is obviously from an application point, very uh, broad. So these are three domains uh, where the platform has been applied. Um, referring to previously discussions, we uh, talking about uh, let's say the healthcare domain, uh, smart living. Uh, um, but as we open source, we also do see examples of people or installers using our software in the healthcare domain. So examples were um, uh, eye tracking uh, applications for uh, allowing an ALS patient to control his environment just by his eye movement built with open remote that's purely community project and another one was um, uh, panic buttons uh, being connected to the system which then next would allow additional uh, alerting or control or push notifications to other systems uh, so for that also open remote is used as part of the, of the solution uh, but to be fair healthcare is um, an interesting domain but a hard domain to generically approach uh, so that's why I didn't mention it in the first three examples. Um, it, it's, it's a very easy answer, actually, to be honest. So, as, as mentioned, we are open source and and we are software. So scaling is is extremely important uh, to to. Um, uh, stand a chance of uh, of being picked up. Now we've reached that point, and we I think beyond the critical level. Um, um, initially, we've uh, focused a lot on larger commercial projects, so we do have large project-based customers. And Ministry of Defense is one. That we have a couple of cities across the world using our software. We have some OEMs using our software as a baseline for that that product, but it's a kind of one-off um act activities and, and, and larger projects and <clears throat> at this stage when we as we now releasing or the the current release is a full version a full complete version of our platform and what i mean with that it, it includes all the installer and integrator uh, tools to be able to to use it completely by a broader group without too much uh, support of our uh, 
uh, side, um, the visibility of Open Remote is uh, crucial for us now. So being visible and being noticed as uh, the open source IoT platform with as much and many people as we can imagine, um, that that's relevant for us. So so getting the word out that we exist and uh, and then sure when people would look at us. Uh, I think it's up to us to convince them that we have something good on hand. But even being noticed is not uh, uh, straightforward. Uh, uh, so that's definitely where you can help us a lot, I think, just spreading spreading our name. Um, I think I've mentioned uh, most of it. Um, 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 I think the one thing I just want to emphasize is that we we started a bit the other way around. So our platform is already, although we're introducing it now wider to a community, it has always been open source publicized. Uh, but the reason we're putting noise on it is because all the features are now there to, to use in open source for the community. Um, and that took us a while to develop it. Uh, and to get there we started ourselves with large projects so although we're introducing it relatively new to actively in a community in open source as a new version uh, of our software it has already been applied in larger projects and not pilots but real projects so already put it, it has the relevant features and it's robust and stable and secure etc so um that's something I think where we, when it comes to re relevant and credible references that we've already put something uh, in place which we think is relevant and, re and, and impressive. And of course, that's something for users to judge in the end.